struggling to validate your API requests in Node.js? Meet Joy, the ultimate validation schema library. In this video, I'll show you how to seamlessly implement Joy to handle user input, ensure data integrity, and make your APIs more robust. We will also look at how to use ChatGPT, or any other AI for that matter, to get a head start on creating validation rules. Hi, my name is Alex. I am a senior software engineer with years of experience in JavaScript and Node.js. My goal is to help you become a confident and stress-free developer by increasing your skills and proficiency. Let's get started. I am in Node.js and Express API project, so let's go to SRC routes v1 tasks folder index.ts file. We have routes to list tasks and get task by ID. Let's go ahead and add a route to create a task. As usual, the link to the GitHub repo with the code will be in the description below. Let's call a post method on tasks a router and pass the root of the tasks route and the handler function create task as an argument. We will import it from the controller. Create task function doesn't exist yet. Let's go ahead and define it in the controller. Create task will be an async function. It will take request and response. We'll use Prisma to create task. We'll pass the data with a user ID. We'll take the user ID from the token. It will be available on the request auth object. Then we're going to take the body that we received from the user and just spread it out and use it to create a task. And if the task is created successfully, we will return it to the user. However, you can see a problem here because we're not guaranteed that the user will send us correct data to create a task, right? So we need to be sure we validate data that is being sent to the API. Creating validation from scratch is a very tedious job. We need to make sure that the request fields are present, the fields are of the correct type. Sometimes you'll need to have correct combination of fields. Then we also will have to combine all the validation errors and return them back. Obviously, there are NPM packages to help us with all of that. One of those packages is Joy. Let's go ahead and install it with npm install Joy. The best place to validate request data is middleware. Let's go ahead and create validate request.ts file in src middleware folder. We import request, response, and the next function from Express since we're going to be creating a middleware. We're going to import type object schema from Joy, and we're going to do export default function, validate request, and this function will be a higher order function because it will be returning the middleware function. So we'll pass schema of type object schema as parameter, and it's going to return an async middleware function called validator. Validator function will be getting request, response, and next parameters as any express middleware function does. We will call validate async method on schema with the arguments of request body and a configuration object. Configuration object will have only one option, abort early false. What it means is that if Joy encounters a validation error on one of the properties sent in the payload of the request, it won't bail out it will continue checking other properties. If you want Joy to bail out early, you can set abort early to true. However, in our case, we would like to return back to the user all the errors, so we will use abort early false. If everything goes well, the method validate async will return a validated payload. We can assign it to the rec body and use it later on to create our task. We want to use this validated payload instead of the body that was originally sent because Joey can do some housekeeping work for us, like trimming strings, converting date strings to JavaScript date object, assigning nulls to an empty field. All the things we need to do before saving data to the database. However, if validation fails, validate async method will throw an error, but since we have an error handler, this error will be caught and returned to the user. Later on, we will update error handler to target Joy validation errors. If you want to learn more how Joy works, you can go to joy.dev. Uh, you can click get started with Joy. It will give you the latest uh, Joy API documentation.
there is a getting started guide and you can also see right here all the options and all the functions joy has and they are pretty extensive but since we're going to use joy to validate api requests we'll use only small number of joy methods okay next thing that we need to do is to create the schema to validate the task payload since we're passing schema into validate request function let's go ahead and create that request schema in src data folder let's create request schema.ts file and define the schema that we'll need to create a task we're going to import joy from joy and then we're going to have a const task it will be an object and that's where we're going to be doing the validation so we'll need uh, the field called project id because tasks can be assigned to projects and since you know the task can either belong or not to a project this uh, project id is optional and if project id is empty we will assign null to it and then we can put our own message if validation fails you don't have to put your own validation messages joey will generate them automatically but i prefer to put uh, messages because I can use a better name for the field and give a user better hints uh, what data is required. For project ID there will be one validation message, project ID must be a string. So all these validation rules we are calling on Joy object you can find in Joy documentation. When you are validating a large payload it can be a little bit of work however there is an easier way of creating these validation rules by using ai so stick around and later in the video i'll show you how to use chat gpt to do that the next field will be name and it will be a string and will be minimum and maximum character length here uh, the name will also be a required field and then we can put our own validation messages for each rule all right next will be the description description will allow null it will be optional max character limit will be 1000 will allow it to be empty and the messages will be description must be a string and description cannot exceed 1000 characters next one is a due date the date should be in ISO format. It should be greater than obviously null. It will be optional. Uh, we will allow null and set it to null if it is empty. The validation messages will be due date must be a valid date. The format must be uh, in ISO 8601 and the date should be in the future. Completed on will be similar to the due date except for the constraint will be that it can be greater than null. So we will use joy rule max now. The task object is done. Let's go ahead and define create task schema. It is super easy. We will just call object method on joy and give it the task we just created. Now we can pass create task schema to validate request middleware. So let's go ahead and do that. In the routes tasks index.ts file, we can just go to post method that we defined and we can add validate request middleware and give it a create task schema. And obviously, we will need to import both validate request and create task schema. Let's go ahead and run npm run dev. Our API is running. Let's go to api test.htp file to test our API. But before we do that, if you are learning something new from this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. In app test.htp file, we will add a post request to create a task. We have to be sure to have content type and, since our API is protected, authorization headers. In the payload of the request, we put property hello and value world to trigger a validation error. Then we're going to make this post request and as you can see we did get a validation error but this error has an http code 500 and a message that can be a bit hard to understand this is how our error handler handled a validation error thrown by joy not bad actually but we can do better let's go to error handler middleware and update error handling to include joy errors we will create another if statement where we check if the error that error handler got is from joy and if it is we're gonna create a validation error of type validation error and the error will be in the following format we'll have a message as validation error we'll have a code error bullied and 
and an array of uh, error objects. We will just map over GUI error details and extract message from each error detail. Then we'll respond with a status 422 and validation error that we just created in JSON format. Let's do a couple more things. First, we need to import GUI from GUI and then create validation error type. In order to define validation error type, we will write the following code. So we're going to put a type validation error, and this type will describe the error. We'll have message, error code, and the errors, which will be an array of error objects with a message property. Let's go ahead, save changes, and start the dev server again. I'll go to API test.http file and make a post request. Now we got a better error response. It has 422 HTTP code. And by the way, I think I forgot to mention 422 HTTP code stands for unprocessable entity. The server understands the request, but can't process it. Basically, the request is invalid. So 422 should be used for validation error responses. Besides 422 HTTP code instead of 500, we now have error object with a message and the errors array with messages, the task name is required, and hello property is not allowed. It looks like validation errors work. Now let's see if our request can pass the validation. So let's go ahead and create a task. We will just use name attribute because this is the only attribute that is required to create a task. Let's send the request and now we got the task back. So the task got created with a name my task. Let's go ahead and create another task just to be sure. This time we'll add a due date. In the due date we will put a date in the future. Let's go ahead and send the request. And as you can see, the second task got created and it has a due date. Besides creating a resource, another common thing that you are going to be doing is updating that resource. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can update a task uh, because it will work a little bit differently. The difference between creating and updating a task in our case is that when updating a task, we won't require any fields. However, in order for payload to be valid, we will need at least one of the fields to be present. For example, we can just send completed on date to mark a task as completed. In order to validate update task request, we can go to requestschemas.ts file and create another schema. Let's go ahead and export const update task schema. It's going to be very similar to create task schema. We will need to update just two things. First, make name optional instead of required. And second, make either one of the attributes necessary to update a task. To make name optional, we will spread task object and then add name property with a joy rules as string, mean, and max character constraints, optional, and error messages. To require either one of the attributes necessary to update a task, we can use Joyce or method to pass to it project ID, name, description, due date, and complete it on. Now the payload will be considered valid if any of these attributes are present. The validation logic is done. Let's create code to update a task. In index.ts file in tasks routes folder, we will call put method on tasks router. Uh, the route will be slash ID parameter because to update a single task, we will also need to know its ID. We call validate request middleware with an argument update task schema and use update task handler. Let's import update task schema from the request schema. Also, let's import update task handler from the controller and create it. In the controller, we'll export function update task. Update task will be very similar to create task. We will use Prisma update method. When updating a task, we need to know which task to update. So we'll have a where property with a task ID, which we get from request params. In the data property of Prisma update configuration, we will just spread out reg that body since it contains already validated attributes. Therefore, it is safe to pass them to Prisma. If the task is updated successfully, the API will send the updated task back to the client with response status 200. And while we add it, let's change response status to 
201 from 200 in the response of create task function because 201 HTTP status code stands for created, therefore it is a better code to use when creating a resource. Let's start the server with npm run dev. In API test.http file, let's create put request to update a task. We also need to get a task ID and put it in the request. In the payload, let's try to update the task name to updated task and send the request. The task was successfully updated. Let's also try to complete this task by setting completed on to a date in the past. And now the task has completed on value as well. Finally, let's assign this task to a project. Let's grab a project ID from get projects endpoint. We will use the project ID to update the task using put request. And now our task is assigned to a project. Speaking of projects, when creating a project or updating a project, we will also need to validate data sent by the user. Let's take a look at Prisma schema. According to Prisma schema, we will need only uh, two fields, name and description to create a project. And of course, we will need to validate them. Obviously, validating those properties is going to be easy. However, in real life, resources can have a lot of attributes and validating them can be a little bit of work. And that's where you can use AI to help you create Joey validation rules. Let's go to ChatGPT and do the following prompt. Create Joey project validation schema to create a project. Project is an object. Name my project. Description my project description. Name is required. Description is optional. When defining an object for ChatGPT or other AI tools for that matter, I'm using ChatGPT as an example. You can use an example payload so the AI based on the example will figure out validation rules. And of course, you can add clarifications. In our case, with all ChatGPT, that the name should be required and the description should be optional. ChatGPT created Joy validation rules for us and, frankly speaking, did a pretty good job. It also suggested we should be trimming the strings. It is a good idea because sometimes users can put an extra spaces at the end when entering data. You can use the rules generated by ChatGPT as a basis for your validation schema and tweak them the way you need. So AI provides a great head start for creating uh, validation logic. Data validation is a crucial aspect of API security, ensuring that incoming data meets predefined criteria. Another essential component of API security is authentication. If you'd like to learn how to secure API using token-based authentication, such as integrating Auth0 into your Node.js Express application, check out our video on the topic for a step-by-step -step guide.